Hello, this is Angela from Warped Weft with a demonstration on a mixed media background for journal pages. For this page, I've used Kodak presentation paper. It's the matte and it's 130 GSM. Even though it is 130 GSM, it does feel a little bit thinner and lighter than the 100 GSM drawing paper. However, this is the paper that I use for when I'm printing pages for my journals. So I'm going to have a go and see how it turns out on the presentation paper versus the cartridge paper or drawing paper because um, this one is actually it's about $12 Australian for 100 sheets and the cartridge paper is about the same price depending on what brand you buy about the same price for 25 or 30 sheets so this works out at a, a cheaper option it does print beautifully and I'm just going to have a go and see how this works for my multimedia pages so as with my other multimedia pages I've started I've already gessoed uh, this piece of paper and um, it at the moment has not buckled as much as cartridge paper however it's not completely dry it's still slightly damp but I'm going to use it anyway so on this one I'm going to try using again this is another journal page so it's it's I don't have to have the same thing on both sides so I think I'll try my cobblestone that I really like and I'm going to try another mandala on this side of the paper just so that we can see the kind of the two different um, papers and how they perform so I'm using the maker impasto model paste which is from Limcraft and I'm going to stencil on this corner I'm not going to stencil right across to this side because I want it to look to get to have a more relaxed look to it so I will stencil to the edge here and to the bottom and right the way across to this side but I'll leave it shaped going up I'll just leave this corner blank now as you can see these are the stencils that I got from a local uh, place I actually bought them off of eBay and then discovered that they were a local business when it arrived very local to me and they appear to handle much better than say this one here as you can see this one's already started to lift up and I'm really happy with that okay so I'm just going to peel this off and you can see my cobblestones there and then on this side and this stencil I got from Big W and it's fairly sturdy it's made of the same plastic as or, as the one on this side and it's a much sturdier stencil and I have to say these were cheaper so sometimes what you pay for is not what you get Stenciling this a bit more, push it down into the spaces. So that I get a good print. Don't worry if you go over too much. You on the side you don't want it, you can lift it up afterwards. So I'm just going to take this off as you can see there's a little bit of overflow there I'm just going to wipe that off and as always and I've missed a few pieces here but that will I think that will just add to it um, don't worry about getting it too perfect it's not meant to be perfect um, do wash your knife or whatever you're using you can use you can use a um, 
an old credit card you can use a piece of stiff cardboard whatever I just happen to have a fair few palette knives uh, that I can use on both my painting and on my mixed media um, but you do need to wash them as soon as you finished with them because they will dry horrible if you don't So this is the photo, um, sorry, the presentation paper, the Kodak presentation paper. I'm going to treat it exactly the same way as I have done on uh, cartridge paper um, and we will see if it makes a difference. So I'm using a piece of acetate. I'm using the Memento rhubarb stalk and I'm just going to wipe the ink around onto the acetate spray the acetate with water turn it over and start moving that around on my paper transferring some of the wet ink up here to that corner and I'll leave that to dry now already I can see that that is seeping into the paper a lot more than when I did the other one you can see it there it's starting to really soak in we'll see what this looks like when it's dry so this is the Kodak paper. As you can see, it, there's still some smudges here where the ink so sinked, it sunk into the paper. Um, I've got a little run here, that, um, but that will cover up sooner or later once we, once we do some other work on this. Um, I quite like these random kind of prints. I'm using a cardboard box as a base, and that's why it's come out in kind of like little um, a, a print, basically. Uh, some of it's I'm going to leave some of the dark patches and in some of the light patches I'm going to add a little gesso, but I'm not going to use a brush this time. I'm going to use a cloth so. I'll put some into the lid of a jar and I'm just going to dab my cloth in there Not too much on and just start dabbing I'm going to dab in this corner up here where it was a little bit messy. Dab down here. But I'm going to leave that part up there with the nice pattern on it. I'm not too worried about the bits inside the stenciling because I'm going to run some ink into those later. I'm just going to put a bit in this corner here. Okay. This gets a bit messy, so you'll need to wear gloves and have some paper towel handy. Once the modelling paste has dried, mist the page with water. I'm going to cover the whole page as I want some runoff into the unstenciled area. While the page is still wet, drop one drop of ink near each area of the page you want to ink. I'm smooshing it around to encourage it to mix with the water on the surface of the paper. Lift up the page and allow the ink to run down and across the page, moving the page around to manage the flow of ink on the page. Add a bit more ink if you need to, but only one drop at a time, and drain off any excess ink onto the paper towel. Smoosh the ink around a bit more if you need to get into certain areas. Once you're happy with the inking, lay the paper flat to dry. So I'll just explain what I did with this. So I printed 
this this was a, a piece of a printed piece of paper that I, I had and I tore another little piece to go up in the corner here and then I had this scrap here so I've put this one on I put a little butterfly on it to match up because I am using this in a journal featuring um, G Kerr's pink butterflies so to tie it in with the pages that I printed from the kit I've used some of the fussy cut butterflies that were in the kit so that's one of them there um, and then I found this paper that was really pretty um, a while back and this is just a scrap of it um, then I used a die cut this one was a bronze cardboard bronze pearlized this was white pearlized uh, but I sprayed it with a little bit of pale colored ink and let it dry and then glued it on just so that it wasn't stark white but I didn't want it as dark as as the leaves and then I've just added some little uh, uh, pearls onto here little stick on pearls down this side I've repeated a, the last little scrap of that down here um, and as I said I've used two of um, G Kerr's butterflies the same cut out from here I've used on here and I used a gunmetal uh, stays on ink for that that was cut from a piece of scrap packaging um, so it needed something on it I've also used a pen a painty pen so I've got a, a fine tip on it and I used that to mark some the centers of the leaves on this one and then I've used it to draw in some curls on on the rest of the paper so this side is silver this side is gold this was a little doily that I've made using a cake decorating mold and gap sealant so you spread it on let it dry peel it off and I've colored that in the gun metal I've added the pearls here to both the butterflies on this one this was a little string bit I pulled off some hessian or burlap just a, a, a little waist um, string of it and I colored it with the um, gunmetal ink and I've just glued it on there and then there's some coffee dyed muslin underneath and that's it so they've got a little pocket here for the journal and you've got a larger pocket here for a journal so these are intended as journal pages so I folded the page in half the other way so you can get an idea of what the pages look like as single journal pages so this is one side this is the other side on this side because there is so much bleed through on the back here I will need to put a piece of paper over it I don't want to turn it into a pocket because this will still be a little bit visible as the pocket opens so I'll glue a piece of paper right across the back here and I'll use a 120 GSM paper anything lighter and these bleed throughs will show through thank you for watching if you would like to see more of my videos please hit the subscribe button below